I want to share with you some ideas about the secret power of time in a very short time. Right, start the clock, please. 30 seconds, studio. Keep it quiet, please. Settle down. It's about time. End sequence. Take one. 15 seconds, studio. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Let's tune into the conversation of the principles in Adam's temptation. Come on, Adam, don't be so wishy-washy. Take a bite. I did. One bite, Adam. Don't abandon Eve. I don't know, guys. I don't want to get in trouble. Okay, one bite. What the hell? Life is temptation. It's all about yielding, resisting, yes, no, now, later, impulsive, reflective, present focus, and future focus. Promised virtues fall prey to the passions of the moment. Of teenage girls who pledged sexual abstinence virginity until marriage, thank you, George Bush, the majority, 60%, yielded to sexual temptations within one year. And most of them did so without using birth control. So much for promises. Now let's tempt four-year-olds giving them a treat. They can have one marshmallow now, but if they wait until the experimenter comes back, they can have two. Of course, it pays if you like marshmallows to wait. What happens is two-thirds of the kids give in to temptation. They cannot wait. The others, of course, wait. They resist temptation. They delay the now for later. Walter Michel, my colleague at Stanford, went back 14 years later to try to discover what was different about those kids? There were enormous differences between kids who resisted and kids who yielded in many ways. The kids who resisted scored 250 points higher on the SAT. That's enormous. That's like a whole set of uh, different IQ points. Uh, they didn't get in as much trouble. They were better students. They were self-confident and determined. And the key for me today, the key for you is that they were future focused rather than present focused. So what is time perspective? That's what I'm going to talk about today. Time perspective is the study of how individuals, all of us, divide the flow of your human experience into time zones or time categories. And you do it automatically and non-consciously. They vary between cultures, between nations, between individuals, between social classes, between educational levels. And the problem is they become biased because you learn to overuse some of them and underuse the others. What determines any decision you make? You make a decision on which you're going to base an action. Okay? For some people, it's only about what's in the immediate situation, the immediate stimulation, what other people are doing, what you're feeling. And those people, when they make their decisions in that, on that format, we're going to call them present-oriented because their focus is what is now. For others, the present is irrelevant. It's always about what is this situation like that I've experienced in the past. So that their decisions are based on past memories. And we're going to call those people past-oriented because they focus on what was. For others, it's not the past, it's not the present, it's only about the future. Their focus is always about anticipated consequences, cost-benefit analysis. And we're going to call them future-oriented. Their focus is on what will be. So time paradox, I want to argue, the paradox of time perspective is something that influences every decision you make you're totally unaware of. Namely, the extent to which you have one of these biased time perspectives. Well, there are actually six of them. There's two ways to be present-oriented, two ways to be past-oriented, two ways to be future. You can focus on past-positive, or past negative, you can be present hedonistic, namely you focus on the joys of life, or present fatalist, doesn't matter, your life is control. You can be future oriented, setting goals, or you can be transcendental future, namely life begins after death. Developing the mental flexibility to shift time perspectives fluidly depending on the demands of the situation, that's what you gotta learn to do. So very quickly, what's the optimal time profile? high on past positive, moderately high on future, and moderate on present hedonism, and always low on past negative and present fatalism. So the optimal temporal mix is what you get from the past. Past positive is your roots. You connect the family, identity, and yourself. What you get from the future is wings to sort of new destinations, new challenges. What you get from the present hedonism is the energy. The energy to, to explore yourself, places, people, sensuality. Any time perspective in excess has more negatives than positives. So what a future sacrifice for success? 
They sacrifice family time, they sacrifice friend time, they sacrifice fun time, they sacrifice personal indulgence, they sacrifice hobbies, and they sacrifice sleep. So it affects their health. And they live for work, achievement, and control. I'm sure that resonates with some of the testers. <laughs> and it resonated for me. I grew up as a poor kid in South Bronx ghetto, a Sicilian family. Everybody lived in the past and present. I'm here as a future-oriented person who went over the top, who did all these sacrifices because uh, teachers intervened and made me future-oriented, told me don't eat that marshmallow because if you wait, you're going to get two of them, until I learned to balance out. So I, I stopped, uh, I've added present hedonism, I've added uh, 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 a focus on the pa past positive, and so at 76 years old, I am more energetic than ever, more productive, and I'm happier than I have ever been. I just want to say we're applying this to many world problems, changing dropout rates of school kids, combating addictions, enhancing teen health, curing vets PTSD with time metaphors, getting miracle cures, promoting sustainability and conservation, reducing physical rehabilitation with a 50% dropout rate, altering appeals to suicidal terrorists, and modifying family conflicts as time zone clashes. So I want to end by saying many of life's puzzles can be solved by understanding your time perspective and that of others. And the idea is so simple, so obvious, but I think the consequences are really profound. Thank you so much.